Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. The PC parts market in 2021 has impacted enthusiasts as well as budget builders alike. But can you build a gaming PC for less than $60? Let's find out. Today we set out to see if you can build a PC on a true shoestring budget, so we're obviously going to have to hit the used market. I hit up Craigslist, which I usually tend to avoid these days seeing as how it's gone the way of the dodo bird ever since Facebook Marketplace came up. But while I was scrolling, I found this gem. This computer was listed for $30 and the only things it seemed to be lacking were the graphics card and the hard drive. Now the previous owner did state that the motherboard seemed to be failing because it didn't always post. However, I decided to take a chance and we snagged it up for that $30. Next, we headed back to Facebook Marketplace where I picked up a GTX 550 Ti. Now it was listed for $20, but I got $5 knocked off because there was a broken fan on the cooler. So that brought our total up to $45. I really wanted to get this PC built in a $50 price budget, and the only hard drives I could find for $5 were 5400 RPM hard drives for laptops. Unfortunately, this didn't pan out as you'll see in a little bit, so we did have to upgrade to a 7200 RPM hard drive. And from what I could see, those hard drives could be pretty readily available at $10, bringing our total up to $55. First things first, we need to test this system. We slapped the graphics card into the computer to see if it would post, and nothing, but I'm not giving up. So we decided to disassemble the whole computer, clean everything, and then reassemble to see how it went.
The cleaning process went pretty smooth, but there was a little bit of gunk on the bottom of the case that I could not get off. I tried different cleaning solutions, I tried scraping it, it just would not come off. So those little stains are still there. Other than that though, everything went smoothly and we reassembled the system. On our second attempt, we still failed to post. After rearranging the RAM a bit, I found that the second RAM slot in the motherboard had failed. However, the other three were still fine, and to my surprise, we ended up having 12 gigabytes of usable RAM in this system. And the CPU was revealed to be a Phenom 2X4 965 Black Edition. Not too shabby. So that brings our system to a quad-core Phenom 2, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 550 Ti. Not a high-end system by today's standards, but we'll see what we can do with what we've got. Oh, and that power supply? That's a 700 watt power supply, which is probably worth the $30 we paid for the entire base system. Now that we were posted, we decided to install Windows on the 5400 RPM hard drive, and it was painfully slow, but I wanted to press through to try to get into that $50 price budget. Unfortunately, once we got into games, things got so stuttery, it looked more like a slideshow than gameplay. That's when we switched to the 7200 RPM hard drive, and now we could finally get into games. Now, knowing that we didn't have top of the line hardware, we didn't really focus on AAA titles. We knew we weren't gonna be able to play that. So instead, we decided to focus on esports and other popular games. First up, we tried Apex Legends, and we failed. We got an error because the CPU doesn't have the instruction sets necessary to run this game. Strike one. Next up, we have Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, which is becoming a much more popular title despite the fact that the original Age of Empires 2 came out in 1999. And in the can benchmark, we saw a rather abysmal 24 frames per second. Our CPU just doesn't seem to be able to hold up here. Strike two. Moving on to CSGO, we turned all of our settings all the way down, but we did maintain the 1080p resolution and we got a really respectable 102 frames per second on average. There was a little bit of stuttering the first time you loaded into the map, but after that, everything was buttery smooth. Next up is Fortnite, where we saw a very respectable 58 frames per second on average. There was some stuttering when you first jumped from the bus, but that's very typical of this game, and once you're on the ground, everything ran very well. Next, we tried Minecraft. I didn't really adjust the settings from the defaults, but we did see a very admirable 57 frames per second, and I kind of got carried away in this game. It was actually a lot of fun to play on this system. So as you can see, on a $55 system, you can't play all the latest and greatest games, but you can have a bit of fun with some of the less demanding ones. Now, obviously there's some caveats we have to mention. As you can see, our case has no side panels, it has no cooling fans, and our hard drive had to be held in with zip ties and double-sided tape since there were no hard drive base to mount it in. Also, your mileage may vary depending on what's available to you. However, the performance we got here I don't think is unrealistic in the same budget in most areas. I saw multiple 550 Ti's listed for $20 or less, and you can pick up a second-hand Dell or HP pre-built that would have a second-gen or third-gen i5 or i3 that would perform just as well as this Phenom. Another thing I wanted to mention is this system was actually quite balanced. We saw full utilization of the GPU and the CPU in some of our games, which means we really kind of balanced this thing out quite well. So here's the question. If you're on a tight budget and you want to get into PC gaming, should you do something like this? I really think it depends on the games you want to play. If you're wanting to play the latest and greatest AAA titles, obviously not. But for some esports, this is a fantastic setup. You do want to check the games you are running and the hardware that is compatible. Our CPU was not able to play Apex Legends because of a lack of instruction sets, and that's not unique to this CPU. So definitely check the specs and what your game actually requires in order to play it. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms, and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech tested merch. Also, this came out of that case. We're gonna have some fun with this guy later.